It turns out that the order in which you eat food impacts your blood sugar, glucose spikes, as well as the ability to digest food in the healthiest way possible. Flattening your glucose levels and avoiding these glucose spikes is the number one place to start in order to get your health back. So let's get to the hack. There's a study that was done in 2015. That is Jessie Inchopse, who also goes under the title Glucose Goddess, and she is a scientist who did extensive research on this topic of food order and how it affects blood sugar and digestion. And this study changed the game in terms of food order. Up until then, and you might have learned this in school, we all used to believe that after we eat, all of our food becomes this big sort of soupy, smoothie mess in our stomach, and that it all gets mixed together. I too also operated under the belief that when you eat food, it all just becomes this big melange in your stomach, this big amalgamation of pieces that the stomach then uses acids to pull out ingredients and nutrients. The same calories, the same composition, it was the same meal. But one of the groups was instructed to eat the ingredients, the elements of that meal in a specific order. I decided one day to put this research into practice. I wanted to see how this would work if I started eating my meals in a specific order, starting with vegetables first, and in this case, that uh, comprised of a salad. I never know what is going to be on the menu at this buffet. This particular buffet is Cafe India. Cafe India has the best Indian buffet that I have access to, and I love the way that they prepare their meals. However, Usually when I go, I would eat in a random kind of way. It's just whatever, you know, um, met my, my interest when I looked at the buffet. But the day before I planned to go, I said, you know what? I'm going to try this eating method and I know they have salad on the buffet. So let me go ahead and try to eat salad first, even though salad is like my least favorite thing to eat in the world of whole uh, food, plant-based eating, right? It's my least favorite thing. And so it's like, okay, but I'm going to do salad because I wanna kick off this digestive process the right way. I wanna eat the right way, and I'm gonna do it with salad. And then, to my amazement, right, I discovered, well, I didn't really discover, but it was like, yeah, there's chutney here on the buffet. So the day I went, I was like, you know what? I could at least dress this salad up with a little bit of healthy dressing, mint chutney and tamarind chutney. And that made the salad piece all the more desirable. But the biggest surprise and the thing that made this particular visit to the buffet the most productive was the fact that they had cabbage. I've been eating uh, Indian cuisine since 2005, and even with all that time, I don't know everything about Indian cuisine. I only know just a fraction. And there are thousands of options in Indian cuisine. I did not know cabbage was one of them. And so, that yellow substance you see off to the left, that is cabbage, Indian style, Southern Indian style. Because I was like, you know, um, cabbage is one of my top three vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are my top vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. So I was so pleased when I saw this cabbage on the buffet and it could factor into my experiment here my gastrointestinal experiment in diet and health. And it was like, yes, I didn't have to depend solely on salad. I can incorporate cruciferous vegetables in this mix up. And then I got some proteins on the plate. That's what's in the little uh, cup, right? That is uh, ni, uh, I think it's pronounced, well, I'm not gonna try to pronounce it here, but it's a lentil based uh, dish. And then off to the left of it, those are mushrooms. I'm actually gonna eat those 
um, after I finish the cabbage because that fits more into the vegetable mix-up even though it also blends into protein as well. So I had a great dish here that I was able to use to study and observe this eating method firsthand um, and I couldn't be more pleased with the results. That, in the group that ate their meal in that specific order, the glucose spike of the meal was reduced by 73%. The cabbage is absolutely wonderfully done. Cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables is my primary vegetable. And right next to it is mushrooms. Mushrooms rank higher. I'm glad I have both in this particular serving. In the group that ate veggies, then proteins and fats, then the carbs, there was much less inflammation, much less insulin release, much less glycation, much less impact on their mood, their hunger, their skin, their hormones, and their long-term health, okay? This was not the first time that I heard about this. I heard about it a few years back from Jason Fung, and while his information was useful to me, there wasn't enough detail at the time for me to uh, make it a permanent part of the way that I eat food. Talk about why you should consider changing up the order of your meals and taking your carbohydrates last. What possible difference could that make? Turns out it's a lot and it's coming right up. Like I said, he did a great job in explaining this research at the time and I got a lot of benefit from that in terms of intermittent fasting, which I used to do. I don't do intermittent fasting anymore. I have a much different rhythm in the way I go about things. And maybe at some point I'll talk in more detail about that. But food order matters a great deal. And I put more emphasis on that in terms of uh, when I eat, the timing of it. Again, not intermittent fasting, but the optimal times for eating. That's more of the spectrum I'm on. And he did a great job of laying that out at the time. But what I like about what Jesse and Chopse, also known as the Glucose Goddess, has discussed in this discussion is not only the experiment, the, the lab research that's out there, but the experiments that she has done. She's actually done these experiments with a group of, because she's a scientist and she can run these type of trials, these studies, and she has the data that back it up can really start to change things from the inside out. Now, here's an example from my own glucose data illustrating this concept. So in this graph, we have rice, tofu, and broccoli. And I ate this meal in two different orders. So in the first test, I ate rice, then tofu, then broccoli, so not the correct glucose order. And then in the second experiment, I had the broccoli, then the tofu, then the rice. And as you can see, even though this was the exact same meal, when I ate my food in the right order, so with the veggies first, proteins and fats, and then carbs last, the glucose spike was significantly smaller. And this is so easy because you don't have to change how much you're eating, what you're eating, you don't have- The chart that you saw from Jesse and Chopse about food order and the research she's done is the main reason I included her in this discussion because that chart really brings it home. And so the way you eat food is important. And for me, in my own way I live, I follow these guidelines, but I don't do them in a strict way. I bob and weave based on where my body is, based on where my rhythm is, right? But these guidelines are helpful in the bigger picture, right? So I do them about 80% of the time. I follow these guidelines and I find that my health 
is much better these days by going in this direction. I've also done my own experiments where I wanted to incorporate fruit sooner rather than later. Because I've came across information a few years back that was like, you know, you should eat fruits at a certain time and not too close to your meal, or whether uh, before your meal or after your meal and all of that. And I found that to be too restrictive, right? So I was like, there's gotta be a way this, this could fit. And I found it, and that is, you can do this VPC method, do that first, and then you can add fruits at the end, right? And as you know, from following my other discussions, I also have days where all I eat is fruit, right? And so I do a mix of, of frugivore and herbivore type uh, eating, right? And so um, that also includes dessert, however you want to des uh, define dessert, right? My desserts are, you know, maybe fruit or maybe dates or maybe some honey mixed with uh, dates or something like that. Honey mixed with pistachios, right? Something simple in my case, but whatever the case may be, this information not only is recent, right? But there is ancient knowledge and wisdom that breaks this down as well. And so these things have been known for thousands of years it's just that through our modern research process, we evaluate these things separately so that they can be understood from a different perspective. Also, be careful with burritos, with wraps, and with sandwiches because they can absolutely destroy this method. You think you're getting it all in one? I've found over time that burritos, wraps, and sandwiches, even if they're veggie burritos, veggie wraps, Mediterranean wraps and Mediterranean uh, sandwiches or veggie sandwiches, they digest in a very funny way, in a very funny way, right? And I'm using that term lightly, but I've tried those. I even tried um, these sort of things recently. And I'm telling you, it's, you know, and maybe not for everyone, but for my body, for my own personal body, burritos, wraps, and sandwiches, just don't work. They don't cut it. So I just cut them out altogether. Um, the only way I can do something that involves, um, you know, carbs with vegetables at the same time is something like non bread. And I put some uh, beans, some maybe some rice and maybe uh, some vegetables in there. My body can handle that a little bit easier. But then again, all the ingredients there are super fresh. They're also simpler. The bread in this in that particular case is also simpler and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Also, this issue of drinks. That was, that was also something that I had heard and that I had learned about where it was like, be careful about drinking before your meal and drinking after your meal because you can disrupt your digestive juices. That is true, but with a caveat. And that is, if you are drinking carefully, where the liquid is designed to complement digestion rather than compete with digestion, then that's a little different. Also, little sips matter more than big gulps, right? If you take big gulps, that can be more uh, detrimental to proper digestion than if you're sipping. And then if you're eating soups, right, you're getting a drink and you're getting a meal all in one, right? So that's a way to also merge drinking and eating in, in one uh, setting is when it's more of a soupy type of uh, concoction, which is actually the preferred way to eat the majority of meals where they're more hydrated in their composition rather than dry, right? And so soupy meals, hydrated meals, and following the VPC method is a sequence of eating that is more healthy and also contributes more to the living food approach to eating, also known as sattvic, but also known by other names. And I'm gonna talk more about living food in the next video that I put out. I'm gonna talk about this idea of living food, as well as the pitfalls and perils of eating meat. So stay tuned for all of that, and I will catch you in just a bit.